Good morning, everyone. Glad to have you here this morning as we gather in worship on this last day of July. Now, I needed to say that because I have to keep reminding myself that we're already completed seven months of the year. And, uh, you know, it just seems like it goes all too quickly. Um, so, hopefully, you've had a good week and that uh, you'll be safe this week as we once again visit those. Uh, uh, triple digits uh, that they're predicting, which hopefully why won't impede uh, you beyond the norm. Uh, we hope that uh, you'll stay safe. So this morning, uh, there are a number of things that we've uh, noted within. We thank you for all of the donations that you've made for the personal care products. Uh, if you have not done so yet, we'll still take them at Grace next week um, and make sure that they can find their way to the appropriate folks. Uh, we did learn yesterday that uh, we have received a marvelous gift from a gentleman uh, who had uh, done some butchering for himself uh, and had more meat than what he wanted, so he donated it to our pantry at Grace. So uh, this week we'll be handing out uh, some fresh, well, it's not frozen, but fresh meat. So. Uh, okay, let's begin with prayer. Lord God, as we gather, why we do so humbly, notice, knowing that uh, we always come up short. And oftentimes, why, as St. Paul would say, you know, we, we maybe should be doing more uh, looking up and seeing the marvelous goodness that uh, you provide from your hand uh, in all kinds of ways around us. We're ever so grateful for the way that you sustain and bless each of us uh, gathered here as well as all of your creation. And we pray that. Uh, Throughout this coming week, why may people be safe and, uh, uh, and find shelter in the midst of the heat. Grant your grace to us as we gather, may our song and our voices be lifted in praise to you. For it is indeed the same as we pray. Amen. Colleen prepares us now.
one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Please use this time of silence for your own personal prayer. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life, save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sin, but it delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Amen. We sing now, God of grace, God of glory.
Vanity of vanities, says the teacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. I, the teacher, when king over Israel in Jerusalem, applied my mind to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given to human beings to be busy with. I saw all the deeds that are done under the sun, and see all is vanity and a chasing after wind. I hated all my toil in which I had toiled under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to those who come after me, and who knows whether they will be wise or foolish. Yet they will be master of all for which I toiled, and use my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity. So I turned and gave up my heart, gave my heart up to despair concerning all the toil of my labors under the sun. Because sometimes one who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave all to be enjoyed by another who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and great evil. What do mortals get from all the toil and strain with which they toil under the sun? For all their days are full of pain, and their work is a vexation. Even at night their minds do not rest. This also is vanity. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for this day is a portion of Psalm 49. We'll begin with uh, singing the end upon verse. I'll need to play it for us. Mm. In 
in that renewal there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, and free. But Christ is all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Orville Sash. 
Harville had a very humble job in a certain company, a job in the lowest basement of the building. He was a mailroom clerk, and as a mailroom clerk, why, there was no one who was lower than he. One day, he came across a bug scurrying across the floor. Now, Horbo may have had the lowliest job in the company, but he was bigger than the bug. So he raised his foot to flatten the hapless bug. But this story is a fable, and the bug speaks to him. Spare me, said the bug, and I will grant you your fondest wishes. Horbo spared the bug. His reward? A wish. I wish to be promoted to the second floor, he said. And his wish was granted. Zap! He found himself working on the second floor. But wait. Horval heard steps on the ceiling of the floor above him, on floor two. Higher level obviously meant higher wages. The next day, Horval's wish was that he would be on the third floor. And he got a job as the sales coordinator. But that didn't end his ambition. He wished for still more promotions. And so up he went, up to the 10th floor, and then to the 20th, and then to the 50th, all the way up, not satisfied. He was sitting on the 96th floor by a pool when he discovered that there was a stairway that led up to another floor. He scrambled up the stairs and found himself out on the roof of the building. Ah, at last! He was the highest, the greatest. Finally content why he headed back toward the stairway when he saw a boy on the edge of the building with his eyes closed. What are you doing, he asked. Pray, said the boy. To whom, he asked. And the boy pointed his finger upward toward the sky. And he said, to God. Now, panic gripped Orville. Was there a floor that was still above him? He couldn't see it. He couldn't hear any footsteps shuffling around. There were only clouds in the sky. Do you mean that there is somebody above me, he said? Someone greater than I? And the boy's simple answer was, Yes. The bug was summoned. Make me God, said Orville. Make me the greatest. Put me in the type of position that only God would hold if he were on earth. And it was great. And the very next day, why Orville began as a gopher in the basement, helping others to succeed in their job. Paul said, since you have been raised with Christ, Christ said very clearly to his disciples, I came not to be served, but to serve. Such a changed reality results in changed conduct, so that how we live reflects who we have become. The recent images captured by the Webb telescope are truly remarkable. The vastness of the universe is breathtaking. Awe oh, and wonder grip us as we gaze at the galaxy upon galaxy that it sees, beyond what we could have ever imagined or even comprehended. We pause for a moment from our looking down to look up. What are human beings that you are mindful of them? The psalmist cries. Cosmic order we glimpse through this most far-reaching telescope certainly confirms our smallness. We don't look down on the universe. Perhaps the universe looks down on us. Or perhaps the cosmos in all of its mystery and vaster and grandeur doesn't care one way or another. After all, whether we look down on ourselves or look down on others, whether we treat ourselves or others with, as Paul says, anger, wrath, malice, slander, abusive language, we don't alter our place in the universe as glimpsed through this most powerful telescope. The universe goes on with or without us. 
Now, there may not be any obvious cosmic consequences as to whether our planet is here today and gone tomorrow, or as whether we look down on ourselves and others and treat each other in ways that God disapproves of, according to what Paul speaks here in Colossians. Nevertheless, there are consequences as far as God is concerned. Unlike the universe or the cosmos itself, God is personal. God sees. God sees more clearly than any of us the consequences of our looking down and not caring for what God has created. The consequences of our thoughts, words, and deeds, and of what we have done and left undone separate us from God and destroy the creation. We work against God rather than with God, as evident in the aspect of global warming. The creation to which we belong is not in harmony. All is not well. Our own, we cannot see where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Indeed, God remains hidden, even as we, for the first time, see innumerable galaxies within the vastness of all creation, and we appear hidden. At Jesus' crucifixion, God was also hidden. The cross hid God from us. And yet Jesus' death, followed by his resurrection, revealed God to us as nothing else could. It turned out that God came out of hiding for all people in Jesus' crucifixion, in his death, and in his resurrection. We just couldn't see God in the death and outpouring of Christ's life for others until we see the resurrection. And Paul would state, so if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. A promise embedded in this marvelous proclamation is that Christ is seated at the right hand of God and you and I will be raised to be with Christ. To be raised, obviously, we have first to die, but only in this death we don't die alone. We didn't die separated from God. Rather, we died with Christ in the waters of baptism. And God's hiddenness and our separation from God have been revealed and overcome by Christ. Our new life with Christ, our resurrection, is safe and secure, hidden within. Even though we are dethroned by such a vast and mysterious, impersonal, though ultimately incomprehensible to us, universe, the existence of which in no way depends upon whether or not we are here or we're not here, we nevertheless die and rise with Christ. And Christ knows each of us in a personal way, as no one else does. And only he would have raised us with him in glory. Rather than look down on ourselves and others, we look to Christ instead. Although we realize how small and how insignificant we are in the vastness of this universe, we can still trust and hope in the one who has come among us, Christ. Amid all that there is, including galaxy upon galaxy, we can still believe that Christ, who is our life, is revealed, and we trust his promise that we also will be revealed in glory. Well, until then, the new self that we continually become in our dying and rising of Christ is renewed in knowledge according to the image of our Creator, says Paul. In this way, we are enthroned with Christ and continually assured that our new self is molded, formed, shaped into the image of God, even as we sing that as we began worship this day. We resist looking down on ourselves and on others. Instead, we rejoice and give thanks for the image of God that we see in ourselves and that we see 
in others. Wherever Christ is, there the renewal of self happens. And Paul assures us that Christ is all in all. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, documented or undocumented, we might add. The ways in which we rank ourselves above or beneath others in the cosmic order no longer applies. The anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language, as well as the lies, depart from us because we encounter Christ in our neighbor. We therefore are invited to listen, to respect, to serve, and to encourage our neighbors. We desire to grow in the truth of the knowledge that we all bear the image of the Creator. That as Paul says, Christ is all in all. After all, this is the promise that lifts us and all up. The point here is not that God will one day make believers new. It is rather that God has already done so. And that this hidden truth will soon be plainly seen. So, how shall we live? Looking up? Looking down? Simply looking straight ahead? Since we have been raised with Christ, we can live in relationship to one another with love, compassion, patience, forgiveness. And they're not just individual characteristics. They are rather divine gifts that are only received in the difficult work of relationships. They are the garments for the body of Christ. And you are in Christ. Let us pray. Gracious Lord God, we give you thanks. Thanks for the marvelous gift that you give to us, not only of this immense galaxy and of this universe that we live in, but also for the people that we give the opportunity to be present with. Enable us to live in such a way that we live out that love and compassion, presence and forgiveness. Grant us your grace. Touch our hearts and our lives with Christ. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe
believed in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I would invite you to take to the celebrate insert and turn to the back page where you'll find the prayers of the church for this day. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. O oh God, you are wholeness. Where there is division in your church, bring reconciliation and healing. Guide the work of theologians, Sunday school teachers, seminary professors, and all who provide instruction for the building up of your church. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God, you are the source of all life. Where creation cries out in distress, bring relief and renewal. Bless farmers, ranchers, distributors, and all who provide our food. Nourish the land and all its inhabitants. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God, you are wisdom. Where nations and communities yearn for peace, bring justice, strengthen those who toil for the welfare of others, especially military personnel, police, first responders, and activists, and for the healing of the nations. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God, you are life. Where your people are overwhelmed with the busyness of life, bring encouragement. Accompany all who experience emotional, mental, or physical distress. Renew us at your table with mercy. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God, you are our treasure. Where scarcity and anxiety pervade, your church bring abundance and vitality. Guide the work of church council and committee and give them clarity for the work of ministry in this place. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God, you are resurrection. We give you thanks for all your saints. Inspire us by your fair example of faithful living to set our minds on things above and to be rich in love toward you. Merciful God, receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. As our Lord Jesus gathered his disciples together around that table on the last night, he took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. So, remembering then his death and resurrection, we take this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you, to serve you as your priestly people, Send now your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of your church. 
gathering in one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith in truth, that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. In Christ's presence, there is fullness of joy. So come, come to the banquet that he's prepared. Please be seated and come as the ushers direct. As we gather around this table, by those who are gathering with us virtually online, we invite you at this time to receive the body and blood of Christ given in shed.
Blessed to you.